That's right, and our Sandra Ali shows us how families are coping and some solutions to bridge the gap until care is available. It's a crisis playing out in homes all across our community. Families in crisis waiting for professional help. That's because therapists have very full caseloads right now and a long wait list. Wendy Harmon has five daughters. They don't have an outlet. They need structure. They need social settings. And then a lot of the stresses that come along with um, how kids cope um, with parents, with job changes, financial situations, and just the stress of everybody being home at the same time. The Romulus mom says her family has been in crisis since the pandemic started. Some of it is too heavy for children and they are starting to act out or have breakdowns, just like parents are having breakdowns and nobody's getting help. It's not just children. I know that's what your focus is, but it's the adults as well. Her 17 year old Sydney has been severely depressed and her 12 year old sister Riley also struggling emotionally. I think the pandemic has made it harder because on top of this, this system already not having the right resources available for children. The pandemic has exposed a greater need of kids in crisis. Like so many others, Wendy's daughters have been on a wait list to see a therapist for more than a year. Parents are in a tailspin. They're frantic and they're desperate and rightfully so because the numbers are really startling. Detroit based psychologist so Dr. Rose Moten are... says Wendy's story is all too common. I've been in practice for 22 years and I've never seen anything like this before. Like it's a real crisis going on and it pains my heart. It pains my colleagues heart when we're not able to service them because there's a limited amount of time. The numbers are staggering. ER visits have been up 45% since the pandemic started for children 18 years and over. That is a startling increase because, because of the therapy shortage, because of the shortage in mental health professionals, parents are you know, they're desperate and they're taking their children who are in this mental health crisis to ER rooms to hopefully get some help for them. With hospital visits climbing and wait lists getting longer, where do you begin to look for possible solutions? With any crises that we, we face, you know, I'm a firm believer that there are solutions to every problem. We just have to work collectively you know, as a community to, especially in this area, to just come together and figure out what's going to work best for our children. Dr. Rose tells parents who can't find a child psychiatrist or psychologist to get creative and start with resources you can find at your child child school, school social workers, school counselors, you know, every school has access, even if they're not there in school, um, the districts have access and they can come into the schools and work with the children. She also encourages parents. Now is a good time to check in with yourself. Since school started, Sydney and Riley are getting some help through a teen clinic for now. They're still on a wait list, patiently hoping for spots to open up with a therapist. We also have to remember the mental health professionals are also human. Um, yes, and they're stressed out too. The mental health system is just so overloaded right now. Yes. Yes. Overloaded. There's not enough help for anyone. Experts also say something else you might want to try is joining an online support group right now. At least it could help out temporarily until something opens up that would be more long term. Back to you. And parents are also encouraged to seek out webinars and support groups for themselves. Dr. Fahim and Dr.